You are listening to the Bright Life Podcast, all about ways to stay inspired, chase your dreams, and find more gratitude in the highs and lows of the journey. I'm your host, Jessica Johnson. I'm a business owner, a part-time digital nomad, a self-growth junkie, a believer in other big-hearted women, and am all about sharing tips, tricks, lessons learned, and encouragement so we can all live our biggest, brightest lives. You ready? Let's do this. Welcome to today's episode. I am so thrilled to have someone so special here to share with you. We have Nikeo Grico, who is a beauty entrepreneur and advocate for clean, inclusive beauty that suits all skin types, tones, and needs. She has launched multiple successful businesses, including her award-winning brand, Nikeo, based on her family's Kenyan beauty secrets, and her inclusive beauty e-commerce destination, 13 Loon, launched with co-founder Patrick Herning in 2020. Nikeo has also created Relevant, Your Skin Scene, which is a clean, science-led skincare brand that works for all skin tones and types. Working with the top labs to ensure a diverse mix of the best chemists, Nikeo formulated each product with superfoods and actives to create products that truly perform. The products are launching in October 2022 with the current hero product, One and Done, available at 13loon and relevantskin.com. So we're going to hear more about all of those things, including her entrepreneurial journey, why she created these brands, how she has handled adversity, and how she's always found this unique way to bring brands that don't exist yet to the market. So welcome to KO. Oh, thank you so much. I'm so happy to be here. And thanks for that warm intro. Kind of bring us into your story, you know, how you became passionate about this and how you got to where you are today. Mm, Yeah, I mean, it's been a journey, that's for sure. You know, I've been in the beauty industry for almost 21 years. Um, As you mentioned earlier, I started a uh, a uh, clean skincare brand called Nikeo based on family beauty secrets that were passed down to me by my Kenyan grandmother. Nikeo was actually named mm-hmm. after her, not me, um, who taught me my first beauty secret using Kenyan coffee beans and sugar cane from her farm in Kenya. And my grandfather um, passed away before I got the chance to know him, but he was a medicine man. And so, you know, his you know rituals around extracting oils to treat the skin and hair and ailments and Um, you know, really looking to nature for all of that. Um, Those beauty secrets are passed down to me as well. And, you know, in my 20s, I felt that the continent of Africa was very underrepresented, especially in premium beauty. And, and so that was my inspiration to create Nikeo and have had quite a journey as, you know, an entrepreneur, as a female entrepreneur, as a black female entrepreneur over the years. Um, Lots of wins, lots of challenges, especially, you know, when it comes to access to capital and and building a business and winning in national retail. I've had a lot of stops and starts, but, you know, in retrospect, when I look back at those 20 years of experience, I'm so grateful for for the lessons, for the challenges, for the moments that kept me going, um, because it did lead me to where I am today, which is you know, with 13 Loon and and 13 Loon was really born um, out of, I really feel a calling and an answer to, you know, living through some really, really difficult times that we all were in 2020, not only with the global pandemic, but the pandemic that is systemic racism Mm -hmm. at its highest in our lifetime. And and I was on all the lists as as the founder of Nikeo Beauty, you know, top black owned shop to follow, et cetera. And it was such an honor to to receive that attention, but it was also built on the precipice of such a heartbreaking time. And it was really hard to get excited about right. beauty sales when we were when we were living in such dark times. And so, you know, I say all the time um, that I, I took my pain and I turned it into purpose and I started shopping these lists and I couldn't believe how many beautiful brands created by black founders there were in the marketplace. I mean, some of the lists I was on had 500 names, a thousand names. And, you know, while I was also watching, um, you know, the 15% pledge and pull up for change and all of these beautiful initiatives happening at the same time, I sort of thought to myself, um, alongside my co-founder, Patrick, you know, why is it that it's so hard to get to 10 or 15 brands when here's a beautiful list of hundreds and, and why don't we start a store 
a platform where we can highlight and have 90% of our virtual shelves and ultimate shelves uh, be filled with BIPOC founders from around the world. Wow, that's incredible. And I feel like you have always, it seems like, built these brands out of really identifying a need, whether it's clean beauty or whether it's access to supporting all these incredible founders. Like, you know, what has been your mindset around building these amazing brands? Is it always Mm -hmm. kind of born out of passion? Is it identifying this need in the market and and infusing the two? Any thoughts there? Yeah. Um, Yeah, I mean, I think with anybody building a business, um, you always have to tap into your own authentic story. Um, You know, people buy into people before they buy into product. And so, you know, for me, any business, you know, with the, I guess now three, four, if you count the little fragrance line I had for five minutes back in 2008. (laughs) um, But, uh, you know, with all of these businesses, it's for me personally been about tapping into my own authentic story, but also um, looking at how do I align my passion, what I want to do, what I enjoy doing with my purpose and, and better serving the collective? And I think, you know, when I first started Nikeo, it was very, um, very much inspired by my family and my authentic story. And, <clears throat> and, and that whole process was of creating that brand was, was so beautiful for so many reasons, you know, mostly being a first generation American, it gave me a connectivity to my family that maybe I hadn't otherwise experienced growing up so far away from them. But I think the difference is with 13 Loon, you know, and, and creating that business and even relevant, um, my beauty line now, um, is that it was the first time that I really, uh, took these years of experience and, and I don't even mean work experience. I mean, just life experience going from my twenties into my thirties into my forties that I've, I've, just realize that, you know, when you align your passion with your purpose, that is the secret sauce for success. And it's not just your own success. It's how do you bring others along in your success? And and that makes this experience even that much more fulfilling um, and, and feels like a great next chapter. Yeah, absolutely. What have been, you kind of alluded to earlier, but what would you say have been some of your biggest lessons along this journey through making these different brands, kind of out of your own evolution, it sounds yeah. like a whole journey as well. Yeah, I mean, I think the greatest lessons have, have really steeped from um, your source of confidence, right? Um, most of the most challenging lessons that I've, I've faced have either done um, come from um, my own lack of confidence in those moments or imposter syndrome or just straight up inequity, right? So, you know, there was times that I would be so hard on myself because I would have to have these sort of stop moments in my old business, in my in my first business, Nikeo Beauty, um, that, you know, I would sort of blame myself for not being at a certain level of success, et cetera. And, and you know, the thing about entrepreneurship or, or anything that we do, you know, A, timing is everything. And, and I think that I launched Nikeo at a time um, where, there wasn't, um, you know, while we still have a long way to go when it comes to access to capital, especially for women and people of color, at the time that I launched Nikeo, I mean, I never met an investor that looked like me or even met with female investors. So at that point, it was, you know, a lot of my challenges and, and maybe those moments I was being really hard on myself were really due to lack of access to capital and inequity. And then as I've sort of grown and, and sort of learned like, wow, maybe you should go a little easier on yourself. This isn't isn't always your fault. Right. And yes, we all make mistakes and we have our challenges. And and I would say another big lesson I've learned is the lesson around when you do find the opportunity to, to go into partnership and, and investment is really a partnership with someone, you know, don't take dumb money. I I've had, I've had the experience of taking dumb money and dumb money I define as the opportunity for somebody to invest in you, but, but they're not coming at the, at the investment as, as a true partner. It's, it's somewhat predatory. It's, it's you yeah. giving up so much of yourself just for a check. And, and when you do that, it's so hard to unwind yourself from that situation. Even in success as a business, you just consistently own less and less. And, And so you sort of ask yourself, what am I doing all of this for? But I'm grateful for that lesson because it's helping me now in my position at 13 Loon, working with all of these incredible founders who are, who are just on the precipice, some of them of growing their business to massive success, going through the investment process to be 
to be a mentor to them um, and and to help them really um, find their their value and their self-worth and their confidence in making decisions. Yeah. And so for anyone who's listening and thinking, you know, wow, I have a lot of those challenges ahead of me as well. Like, what would you share with them about even getting kind of in the door to get that access or those Mm. opportunities as you're starting out? Yeah. I mean, I think I mentioned a little bit about mentorship, but I think that's been probably the greatest gift that I've, um, you know, I I looked for the helpers all along Mm -hmm. the way. Um, when I was 27 and I had no idea how to start a business, you know, I talked to people in my circle of friends or friends of friends, um, colleagues um, from my, you know, entertainment industry days, you know, how do I start a business? Can you talk to me about how you started your business? You know, ask for help. And now, you know, when I started Nikeo Beauty, there was no social media. There was not the access that we have to connect on such a deeper level, um, now, you know, it's, it's so much easier to, to, to hit somebody up on LinkedIn or Instagram or to find people who are building similar businesses or have built successful businesses that you can reach out to. And people generally want to help people. And I always say, you have to mind your manners when, Mm -hmm. when going out and looking for help, you know, don't drive people crazy because everybody's busy, but you'll be surprised, um, you know, when you put yourself out there and you're confident enough to ask for help and to, and to believe in yourself enough to know that you can do it, that that's attractive to people who want to help you. And, and so to not be afraid to, to ask for help and, and to look for mentors and look for the helpers. Yes. I love that. What may be in line with that, but what would you tell anyone else who has a dream for a business, whether it's in beauty, um, skincare, you know, helping others get ahead? Um, it, any advice kind of for anyone who's like, mm-hmm. I have an idea, but um, I don't know where to begin. Yeah. I mean, I think have a plan, do your homework, you know, look to other similar businesses or businesses that you admire and and read their stories and how did they begin? Um, You know, education is power. And I believe that like, take a class. I'm not saying every entrepreneur, you know, I didn't get a master's um, in business. I graduated the business degree. I know a lot of successful entrepreneurs who didn't, um, who did not uh, go to college, but at the end of the day, education comes in all shapes and sizes. And, and, and finding, you know, if you want to open a store, go, go work retail for a little while, right? Mm-hmm. Understand the nuances of, of having a store. If you want to open a restaurant, work as a waiter, figure, figure out how you can best learn the business. Um, taking a night class, if you want to be an interior design, take a CAD class so you understand how that process works. You know, just constantly seek education. You know, I'm still learning every day. And I'd say one of the greatest lessons that I've learned is also to surround myself with people who know better about things that I don't know about. Right. And, mm. and be okay to identify what you're great at. Um, Cause that's what makes you, you, and that's what gives you your, your superpower in your business, but also be really realistic about what you don't know and, and find people um, in your life and sources in your life that can help you to excel by getting the support you need in those areas. Yes. What about for anyone um, who is facing adversity? I know that 13 Mm -hmm. Loom was kind of born out of a lot of that, um, those conversations and shifts that hopefully will continue happening. But, you know, I know you've encountered this as well on your journey, whether it's in getting access to the funding or mentors or whatever Mm -hmm. it may be, but um, any advice for anyone in a similar position? Absolutely. You know, when I started Nikeo Beauty, I had no idea what the stats were around how much financing went to women or women of color. And and in a weird way, you know, knowledge is power, which is what I just said, but there was something great about the naivete I had going into it because I didn't even know how hard it was supposed to be. I just believed I could do it. Mm -hmm. So, you know, I also think that, yeah, there is a lot of adversity and and sometimes it feels like the world is stacked up against you. And, and sometimes I feel like we're over inundated by how bad it really is. Um, just not to get deterred by the stats. Like, you know, you better than anyone and you know, your abilities better than anyone. And, and it, and it does come down to confidence. And, you know, I think one of the greatest sort of mantras that I always had, even when I was like on my knees 
in tears, ready to just quit everything at times. I would always ask myself, well, why not me? Right? Why not me? Why not me for this opportunity? Why not me for this job? Why not me for this investment? Why not me for this opportunity? And and when you really start to lean into that and believe that about yourself, um, it, it really does help to propel you forward, even in the midst of adversity, even when the world is telling you no. I mean, the other interesting thing that I will say is that, you know, for anybody listening that's a, a young entrepreneur or somebody who's starting their entrepreneurial journey for the first time, it's that we're living at this really, really exciting time. You know, I like to come from a place of hope where we're like, we're truly seeing um, an old paradigm go down swinging, right? Mm -hmm. And then you're seeing, even when it feels dismal and we're having to experience, you know, so much oppression against women or inequity in finance, et cetera, et cetera, we're also getting permission in a way to talk about this and, and to use our voices for, to impact change in a way that we never had before. So even in the midst of all of the, you know, hatred and oppression that we've seen, we've also like risen up in a way that sometimes I think we all get so busy that we don't even take the time to recognize. And, yeah. you know, and I mean, 13 Loon's a prime example. You know, I was a a, a beauty founder that had many ups and downs for, for 18 years and then started this platform, started with 13 black owned brands, thought we would, you know, would be omni-channel one day. And now 22 months later, opening 600 stores inside JCPenney, like why not me? Yeah. Right. And I think, I think that that's a testament to how we all kind of yeah. have to like, you know, stand in our uber strength um, and take up more space. Yes. Yeah. Why not me? What an amazing mantra. So I do want to shift into your brands because you have created such innovative brands in the spaces that you're in. Um, so can you tell us a little bit more about your experience creating this clean skincare brand and how it's different from the other ones out there? Yeah. So, you know, relevant, your skin scene is really a culmination of, you know, the last 20 years of my life as the founder of Nikeo Beauty moving into my next chapter and this next brand. And, you know, it's interesting because there's a few things that have happened um, in the creation of Relevant Your Skin Scene. And I think one of the biggest takeaways that I'm getting to experience with such joy every day is that I, for the first time in my life as a beauty founder, um, who on the outside may look like, oh, she's had all this success and she's been at Ulta, she's been at Target, she's, that brand got bought by Unilever and onward. Um, oh. It's been really, really quite a struggle. I've always been the, the little brand in a portfolio that didn't necessarily get the attention or the marketing dollars and, and really had to like fight to survive with that brand. Yeah. And, and relevant, your skin seeing this, this next chapter, this next beautiful chapter of creating another brand has been the first time in my life that I've had the autonomy, the support, the capital, and the runway to build the brand of my dreams. And you know what a testament to what the market could do for for talented young entrepreneurs. You know, not having to wait twenty years to have the opportunity to do that. Now, I will say I'm grateful for the challenges that I had around Nikeo Beauty and the way that. I knew what not to do, right? I got to make a lot of mistakes in that brand that I don't, that I, I got to learn from in creating um, Relevant Your Skin Scene. But the other part of Relevant is that, you know, as a retailer now, you know, I've been a beauty founder turned retailer now, now beauty founder again. Um, it's given me a bird's eye view into how we can better serve all consumers. So, you know, going back to that runway and that autonomy and the ability to create this brand, I'm finally getting to play in actives and work with ingredients and these incredible chemists that I never had access to before, but I'm getting it to do it in a way that's safe for all skin tones. And so when I look at like, you know, some of the acids that I'm using, some of the active ingredients that I'm using, I'm doing it in a way that's level, that's, that's safe for, for all skin tones. You know, a lot mm -hmm. of times melanin rich people are left out at counter, right? You'll pick up a, a product that's a, for instance, a peel or an ex a chemical exfoliator right. and you'll turn it over and you'll look and you'll be like, no way on, <laughs> in the planet can I put this on my face. I'll have so much hyperpigmentation. And so 
you know, sort of having that knowledge and all of these years of experience, I was able to actually like hire two of the industry's top chemists who happen to be black, who so who mm-hmm. truly understand um, the sensitivity around melanin rich skin, but know that we deserve those actives. We want those results. We want that efficacy. But more importantly, we want this in a clean and safe way. And so relevant is really about getting this an opportunity that I've never had before to create something for all that I know um, will resonate across all skin tones, but also getting to do it in a way um, that's, you know, in the most advanced technology, but also enjoy and fun. You know, you see a lot of premium skincare brands and they always play in the the gray family, the white family, black and white, et cetera. And, you know, relevant, you know, I started developing relevant at the same time I started developing 13 Loon and, you know, that was 2020 and it was, you know, we were looking for the joy. And so that's (laughs) a testament to all of the color and fun and, you know, just sort of the whole vibe of relevant, but also delivering on the promise of um, really efficacious products. So I'm very, very proud of it. And I'm just so happy that I, I, I waited 20 years to, to create this because it, it is a culmination. And also, you know, I'm inspired by, by my legacy in, uh, you know, using caffeine and the oils that I choose are, are an homage to my grandmother and grandfather in this line as well. Yeah. And it's such a testament to how every single company you built or relationship you made or challenge that you overcame that you were telling us about all add up to this next chapter, which can be bigger and better than anything you've created for so far, perhaps, but it's all because of all those previous experiences and lessons learned and everything that you went through. Absolutely. So where can people find you and your incredible brands and get in touch with you to support you? Well, you can find me um, at my personal um, handle, which is at Instagram, um, is at Nikao, N-Y-A-K-I-O. And of course, please follow our brands at 13 Loon, and it's 13 spelled out in L-U-N-E, Moon in French, 13 Loon, because there were 13 full moons in 2020. Um, And then relevant.skin is our handle for relevant. And then, of course, you will find us um, nationwide. We are starting our rollout of 613 Loon stores inside JCPenney now. So by this time uh, next year, we will be in all 600 JCPenney doors with our 13 Moon store and stores. So definitely come find us there as well. So huge. Congratulations. And thank you so much for sharing about your stories. I just know it's going to inspire so many people. And then also just personally so excited to get to find all of these amazing access to these incredible brands um, as well. So thank you so much. Oh my gosh. Thank you for having me and for creating this bright space. And I'm so honored to have been here today and shared with you. Thank you. If this episode resonated with you, I have two things you are going to love. One is a Bright Life workbook full of practices you can use to get clear on what your version of your brightest life looks like and fearlessly move towards it every day. And another is a copywriter starter kit full of beginning steps to create a copywriting business that gives you the freedom to travel the world working from anywhere, to replace a corporate salary as your own boss, and to do creative work that lights you up every day. It's lessons I've learned in creating my own content business, and I'm excited to share it with you if you're curious about doing the same. I will link these in the show notes. I hope these serve you. Thank you so much for listening, and I will see you back here next week as we all pursue our biggest, brightest lives together.